Five scary movies based on real life cults. Movies allow us to escape from reality. While most times it's fun, sometimes their topics can be a sinister reflection of society and life itself. The cases on this list depict some terrifying stories of violence and abuse. These are five scary movies based on real life cults. Number five, The Sacrament. The Sacrament is a found footage horror movie directed and written by Ty West. The film itself centers on two vice journalists looking to document their friend's attempt at finding his sister after she joins a mysterious and reclusive religious commune. The movie begins with Patrick, a photographer, receiving a letter from his sister, Caroline. She is a recovering addict who is now living in a drug-free community headed by a religious leader called The Father. Patrick suggests to his co-workers, Jake and Sam, they create a feature documentary about the commune, and they agree. The friends head out there via helicopter since it's the only way to reach it. Once there, the crew goes around doing interviews. Everything seemed good, but soon they discovered cracks in the utopian-like community. The visitors get caught in the middle of an uprising between community members wanting to get out alleging abuse and brainwashing by the father and loyal members of the group. As the visitors struggle to escape, the community members are forced by the father and his army to take cyanide-laced drinks, ultimately killing everyone. In real life, the story mimics that of the horrible Jonestown Massacre, which happened on November 18, 1978. Created by Jim Jones in 1956, the People's Temple was first based in Indiana before moving to California 10 years later. In 1973, Jones then moved the group to Guyana. This place was overcrowded and people were segregated by gender, including married couples. Members had to work all day in the heat and broadcasts of Jim Jones speeches were repeated all day over the loudspeaker. A lot of members were tired of living in the area and wanted out, but Jones prohibited them from leaving, making sure armed guards were on post at all times. Aside from that, they were in the middle of a jungle, and so they really had no means of escape. Word got out of the conditions the U.S. citizens were going through down in Jonestown, so U.S. Senator Leo Ryan took an NBC film crew and concerned relatives of the People's Temples member to visit and inspect the area. At first, everything looked great, but during the big dinner and dance, a note was handed to one of the NBC crew members listing names of people who wanted to leave the community. This indicated to Ryan people were being held against their will. The next day, Ryan offered to take those who wanted to go back to the United States, but few took the offer. As Ryan and his crew prepared to leave for the airport, they were then attacked. Armed men followed them to the tarmac. Ryan was killed and many others wounded. Back in the Jonestown village, Jones told everyone to gather. Agitated and in a panic, he urged members the only way out was to commit suicide. Large kettles were prepared filled with grape flavor aid, cyanide, and Valium. The children and babies were injected with the mixture first. Then mothers drank the poison punch. Each member took the drink those who were resistant were forced by armed men to do so. In the end, the casualties in Jonestown numbered up to 912 people, 918 if you include those killed at the airport. About 276 of these were children. Jones died from one gunshot wound to the head. No one knows if he committed suicide or someone else killed him. A few people survived the massacre by escaping into the jungle or by hiding around the compound. Number four, Rosemary's Baby. When it was first released in 1968, Rosemary's Baby shocked and titillated audiences with its mixture of the macabre and gore. The film centers on Guy and Rosemary Woodhouse in their eerie Bramford apartment building in New York City. As they move in, they're befriended by elderly neighbors, the Kastovitz. Soon, the couple is dragged into strange occurrences happening in their home. 
Rosemary finds herself pregnant and her condition begins to deteriorate as more strange circumstances happen around her. Her friend Hutch tries to get to the bottom of things but mysteriously dies. Rosemary then uncovers that her neighbors are, in fact, members of a satanic cult and have cruel intentions for her baby. Her husband joins the cult, unknown to Rosemary, in exchange for help in his acting career. Grief surrounds Rosemary as the coven kidnaps her child, telling her the baby had died. She doesn't believe them, and when she finds the baby inside her neighbor's apartment, everyone else is gathered around. She approaches it, then asks, what have you done to its eyes? She's finally told the truth, that the true father of her child is Satan himself. The satanic cult in the movie is led by Roman Castavet. The name, it turns out, is an anagram and stands for Stephen Marcardo, the son of a previous resident of Bramford who is said to be a Satanist. In real life, there is a religious organization called the Church of Satan established by Anton LaVey in San Francisco, California. He was appointed as the high priest of the church until he died in 1997. Even though they're calling themselves the Church of Satan, the church argues they don't believe in the devil or its Christian or Islamic notion, but point to themselves as skeptical atheists. The group also practices what they call greater or lesser magic, a form of ritual practice. Aside from tackling a satanic cult in the film, Rosemary's Baby is also linked to another cult indirectly. An extra who appeared in a scene from the film, Michael Rostan, actually ended up creating his own spiritual cult called Buddhafield. Rostan installed himself as a spiritual leader, recruiting mostly fellow aspiring actors in Hollywood. With his powerful persona and charm, he was able to gather over 100 members into a commune. Members hung on to Rostan's every word. Over time, he grew more aggressive, though, and obsessive. He completely controlled what his followers read, watched, or even listened to. Then, his rules got crazier. He forbid members from ever having sex, yet he would openly masturbate in front of them. It was later revealed that for years he would also force himself on many of his male followers. As Rostan's demands became increasingly crazier, many of his followers left. They also demanded Rostan to stop his teachings or they would press charges. But instead of stopping, Rostan simply fled to Hawaii. Until this day, he continues to preach his beliefs to followers. A documentary about the cult and Rostan was created by a former member named Will Allen. It is currently up on Netflix entitled Holy Hell. The documentary chronicles his ordeal with the cult for 22 years, and that cult still exists today. Number three, The Master. Released in 2012, The Master is a dramatic film involving a World War II veteran named Freddy, who's having trouble adjusting to daily life after the war. After being accused of poisoning a co-worker from a homemade moonshine, he then flees away to San Francisco and stows away in the yacht of Lancaster Dodd, a leader of a philosophical movement dubbed as The Cause. Dodd takes a liking to Freddy and takes him in. Their relationship is bizarre, and Dodd would often ask Freddy a series of disturbing psychological questions, causing him to reveal much of his dark past. As Dodd grows in influence with his teachings for the cause, Freddy becomes devoted to him. Anybody who goes against Dodd often receives a harsh and violent assault from Freddy. Despite their sometimes tumultuous relationship, the two continue along with their friendship. It reaches a peak, though, and they eventually part ways. Years later, when they see each other again, Freddy is surprised by how big the cause has grown. Eventually, the two part again, and this time for good. While many critics praise the movie, it wasn't lost on them and moviegoers that the cause is closely similar to the real-life alleged cult of Scientology. Scientology was first created in 1952 by science fiction writer and charismatic man L. Ron Hubbard. Although in the U.S. and the U.K. it's designated as a religion, in countries like Germany and France, it's deemed a dangerous cult. 
Among its many beliefs is that man is a spiritual being, not an animal. They also believe in reincarnation. Some Scientology members today even create contracts offering services that run for billions of years. The group also believes in its own creation myth involving Xenu or Zemu, who once ruled a galactic confederacy of 76 planets. However, they don't allow this creation story to be told to low-level members and would deny it to outsiders as well. Today, some say the Church of Scientology is in decline as more and more members turn their backs on the religion. This includes former celebrities and prominent members of the community. They've started becoming more outspoken against the church, its abuse, and its teachings. Number two, the Wicker Man. Hailed as one of the best horror films ever made, The Wicker Man is a British movie starring Britt Eklund, Christopher Lee, Ingrid Pitt, and Edward Woodward. The film focuses on Neil Howey, a police officer visiting the isolated island of Summer Isle after he receives an anonymous letter about the disappearance of a young girl. Howey, a devout Christian, is appalled to find out the inhabitants of the island have reverted back to a pagan religion. As the officer digs deeper, he uncovers a series of lies and more mysterious circumstances around the island and its inhabitants. After finding the girl is alive, the officer believes that she will soon be held as a human sacrifice in the upcoming May Day celebration. He attempts to save her by stealing a bartender's costume and infiltrating the celebration. With much effort, he does save the young girl and escapes with her into a cave. But as the townspeople rally after them, they call after the girl and she goes back to them. Then they reveal the real sacrifice is Officer Howie instead. They say the sacrifice has to be willing, king-like, a virgin, and a fool, attributes Howie all had. In the end, the officer is forced inside a giant wicker man statue together with other animals, it is then burned by the people as they sing their May Day hymn. The story of the wicker man is baffling and disturbing, but paganistic rituals and beliefs were once practiced by the ancient Celts. They were led by religious figures in their society called the Druids. According to Romans, the Celts practiced human sacrifice and it was the task of the Druids to see that it gets done. Depending on which god they were attempting to please, the method of killing would change. Some gods preferred men to be hanged, while others preferred them to be drowned. Still others liked burning just like the Wicker Man. Today, modern Druids, or Neo-Druids, often still celebrate remnants of Neo-Paganism. A Wicker Man may be used for harvest time or fire feast celebrations, minus the human sacrifice. Like in the movie, practitioners often burn the straw man in celebration, representing the king of the harvest. Number 1. Midsummer. Midsummer is said to be the 2019 version of The Wicker Man. The film follows a group of friends who travel to a remote place in Sweden to attend a festival that happens once every 90 years. But instead of having fun, it turns out they've walked into the hands of an unusual pagan cult. Midsummer revolves around Danny Ardor, a young girl traumatized after her sister kills herself and her parents in their home. Her life is further complicated by her relationship with her emotionally distant boyfriend, Christian. Christian and his friends were invited by their Swedish friend, Pell, to his ancestral commune in Harga to witness a midsummer celebration. He points out this particular celebration is unique because it's done only every 90 years. Although Christian reluctantly invites Danny, she goes with them. And once there, the group is welcomed into the commune. It's not long before they witness unusual circumstances, including the suicide of two elder commune members by jumping off a cliff. When the male survives, community members gather around and smash his skull with a mallet. Despite being disturbed, Dana's group still decides to stay. Conflict amongst themselves begins to break out. One by one, they are attacked by community members. 
With only Dana and Christian left, the community explains that during the festivities, they sacrificed nine humans to purge the evils in the community. The sacrifice requires four outside victims and four commune volunteers. Danny, as the chosen May Queen, gets to win who is the ninth and final victim. She chooses between Christian and a villager. In the end, she chooses Christian. He is sewn into a disemboweled bear and then placed on a fire. Dana is shown crying in horror and anguish, but in the end, she begins to show a smile. Midsummer haunted many, asking if such cults could actually exist. Its real-life counterpart isn't so clear-cut, but in fact, according to the director and writers, they handpicked certain practices, rituals, and lore from various pagan beliefs particularly those from British and German folklore. There's also pockets of Norse mythology thrown into the mix. But certain practices in the movie are real. For instance, the Midsummer Festival is celebrated in Sweden, but of course, it doesn't involve human sacrifice. Sweden's Midsummer's Eve is a national holiday that usually takes place between June 19th and 25th. The festival involves dancing around a maypole with flowers for decoration, just like in the movie. Curiously, the real Harga, which is a small rural area in real life, actually has an eerie traditional folklore. It's said that place is where the devil once appeared and forced everyone to dance to death as he played with his fiddle. This story is later depicted and dramatized by women dancing around the maypole until they drop from exhaustion. The woman left standing is then crowned as Mayday Queen. So there were five scary movies based on real life cults. Scary films are made for entertainment. What most of us don't realize though is that in the middle of our delight at seeing someone gutted or terrorized, we could be watching a depiction of what once actually happened in real life. We have new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so if you enjoyed this one, then please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for tuning in this week, and we'll see you soon.